Here we see a little bit more detail on the WAC formula. It starts off with cost of equity multiplied by equity as a proportion of your funding. That's equity over equity plus debt. Here we've assumed all of your funding comes from equity plus debt, so it's equity divided by 100% of your funding. If you had another source of funding, such as preference shares, we'd have to include that as well. The cost of equity is the required return on equity. That's what the shareholders require as their return. They then multiply that by the proportion of funding. But important here is it's the market value of equity as proportion of funding that we want. The alternative would be to take your book value of equity, but that could be many years out of date. The share price might have changed dramatically since. We want to know the WAC today, not many years ago. So that's the equity we've dealt with. We now move on to the cost of debt. And initially it's quite similar. Cost of debt times by the proportion of funding from debt, i.e. debt over equity plus debt. Our cost of debt is the required return by debt holders. Let's say they wanted a return of 5%. You then multiply that by debt over equity plus debt. And again, it's the market value of debt we use. The big difference with debt is this cost of debt is multiplied by one minus tax. Now, why is that? Well, imagine your cost of debt is five, i.e. the debt holders want a return of five. You pay them five, and that's interest. But interest is tax deductible. It's an extra expense in the income statements. So if they receive five, and the tax rate is 20%, we actually save one of tax. So five times one minus the 20% would equal four. The net cost to the company would be four. So we take cost of debt times one minus tax, and that tax rate is your marginal tax rate. Remember, interest is only changing your profit marginally, so we use the marginal tax rate, and then multiply it by your proportion of funding from debt.